Hello boys and girls, this is Miss Burkholz here from our home in Murfreesboro. How are you? Hope you're doing good. I'm doing pretty good. Um, today we're going to be making a very cute, very easy peasy um, owl sculpture out of salt dough. We're using it kind of like clay. Um, I put the recipe for making and kneading your own salt dough in the description of this video. So you're going to have to make the salt dough first and then watch the video. Um, you're also going to need a marker. Doesn't matter what color because we're just using it for the cap impression. And we're going to be using a sharpened pencil for a sculpting tool. So go ahead and get those things. Go ahead and take your time with um, making your salt dough and come on back whenever you're done. I'm going to read my Bob Ross quote and then we're going to get started. This one says, every day is a good day when you paint. You're here. It's also a good day when you sculpt. So this week's focus is form, our element of art, which is sculpture, pottery, clay. Um, we've made some things out of toilet paper rolls, and we've made something out of foil. So um, I've kneaded my clay, or it's not really clay, but I've kneaded my dough several times. I let it set for a little bit, and now I'm ready to actually make the body of my owl. So I'm going to break off a chunk here. This is going to be for my head. Break off another smaller chunk here. This is going to be for my beak and for my feet. Just put those off to the side. I'm going to make a little ball. Do, 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 do. And I'm going to flatten that ball. Just pressing down on my hands. I have a nice flat surface where I know the salt dough is not going to stick very much. But if you have a surface where it might stick, just be careful that you can get it back up once you've pressed it down into a pancake like this. Okay, so this is about how thin it is. Pretty wide. Yeah, I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger. There we go. Good. All right, now I'm gonna take my marker cap and at an angle, I'm gently pressing in Cross the bottom to make a line of U's for that feather texture. I'm going to be making a whole bunch of U's for real texture for feathers. Um, and you might want to notice how I have one, two, and then one above it. And that just makes the pattern more interesting and a little bit more realistic, even though this is kind of a cartoony type of owl. Now you can be more precise than me, but if you do mess up, you can always just run your finger on top of something, do it again. If you really, really mess up big time, you can squish it, try it again. And that's one of the great things about working with this medium is pretty much until it's all baked, um, you can redo anything. All right, so I've got my body and what I'm going to do with these two sides, I'm going to pick them up. I'm going to fold them over, bringing them together towards the top. And then pressing down at the bottom looks like a little burrito, the tippy top here. These are the wings that are folded over, and this is my body. And we can add texture to that in a minute. All right, so I'm going to pick this up, woo, hopefully without losing the shape. Place it off to the side, and I'm going to make my head. I'm gonna go ahead and flatten out kind of a circle here. I'm not really picky about things being precise, usually just about having fun. Now once I've got kind of a circle, a little bit, it's flat, I'm gonna pinch and pull two points at the top, a little bit like a cat. Now if you have more salt dough or less, your head might be a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller. It's up to you and what you like and what your supplies are. So this one, I think I like it. Go ahead and place it overlapping um, the top part of the body, the skinny part, so it kind of holds the head up. There we go. Pressing that in. Nice and firm. Okay. I have plenty of clay for my beak which I just pinch out a little bit and I'm 
squishing it into a bit of a diamond shape. So to make a little diamond shape, you're just pinching burp, like that and then flatten. I'm gonna put that diamond shape, whoop, the middle part of the face. You might wanna go a little bigger, a little smaller. But your owl, as long as it's got a nice point at the bottom, it's gonna look like a good beak. All right, here's the fun part. With our cap, we're gonna press on either side above our beak, our eyes. So cool how it instantly makes it look like an owl, right? Pretty cute. All right, our feet, I actually don't need this much clay, but since I've got it, might as well make it. Break it into two equal parts. Squish. And I'm going to make it like a rectangle. So I'm kind of squishing it down a little bit, a little wider at the bottom than the top. Same thing with the other side kind of measuring them against each other, make sure they're the same size, just about. Dur, 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 dur. Okay. And with these, I'm gonna put them behind the body, like he's sitting on a tree, right there. I'm gonna press down a little bit to make it stick. There we go, yeah pretty cute and if you squished out some of your little feather textures you can do that again you can add more to it and now for our like outside feather texture I don't know if y'all can see on this one I gave them a ton of texture so I love love texture okay so in the middle I'm just gonna press down to make eyes for the feet I'm just going to press down all the way to the table and cut those little talons. Now, if you want to be fancy, you can kind of sculpt them into a point by pinching and pulling with your finger and with your thumb, or your pencil, not your thumb, but your pencil. And then um, for all the other texture, especially around the eyes, owls definitely have a lot of feathers that are quite fluffy and prominent around their eyes. You're gonna do kind of a sun style like all of these lines are going out like the sun gently pulling up and out you don't need to press down too hard just enough to make a mark and you can keep going all over around the whole face repeating that this is what we call radial balance meaning everything coming out from the middle Balance meaning it's the same on both sides, right? Go ahead and do little nostrils right there. Yeah. Now to make it look very textured, I'm going to go all the way to the edge and kind of pull down. That makes it look even more three-dimensional because even though this guy's pretty flat, he does have a little bit of sides to him. So it makes him look slightly more interesting and dynamic when he's completely colored, covered with his texture, especially in the face. Oh, he looks like a little old owl man. <laughs> and I'm going to go ahead and do some longer lines for the texture in his wings because those feathers would be longer. I'm even gonna do a little bit of curving ones for that part. Awesome, now all I have to do is make sure that I have my oven turned on to 250 and I'm gonna have him bake for about an hour, maybe hour and a half. You really just wanna bake it until it's hard. Like, if you can tell, this guy's pretty hard. He's a solid sculpture. Um, and this guy will be, too, whenever he gets done baking. Make sure you have your parents' permission for using any of these materials, um, especially the oven. You need to check in with whoever you live with, who's an adult, that that's okay that you use it, and make sure that they are supervising you. Um, if I was there, I would be supervising you, too, making sure you're being safe. That's always the most important part of any art project. Be safe. All right, guys, I think that's it for our owl, owl sculpture. 
Um, thank you so much for joining me for another video. I've loved being able to do a little bit of 3D art with you this week. I hope to come up with um, a couple other projects for y'all um, before next week. So stay tuned. I love you guys so much. I hope you're doing wonderfully. And I look forward to seeing you again someday soon. Don't forget to be awesome. And goodbye.